Hello, good evening, Oral Gibbs, and welcome to Oral Gibbs Live. And with me this evening is this gentleman, Mr. Arndell. How are you doing, sir? Well, not too bad, thank you. Everything under control? Well, so far, so good. Well, I had some people asking me when I'm going to have you back on the show. <laughs> so <laughs> you're back here tonight. So it's good. Well, I'm always um, you know, happy to be on your show because I myself got some reactions um, of my uh -huh. programs on your show. And when I'm again going to be on your show, you know, and people appreciate um, a little bit of history and, uh, and, and general speaking. So um, I'm happy to be here again with you this evening. I'm surprised how fast time goes. Oh. It's amazing. <laughs> well, we are, we are at the end of the year. I know, but you, you were here last year, like you were here yes. just yeah. three months ago. Yeah. Wow, it's amazing. So, how, what, what do you think about um, the hurricane season these days? Because you, one of our most experienced when it comes to the hurricane season. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I um, have experience of hurricanes from from 1950. Uh, that's when I was um, attending school. Uh -huh. And and to tell you briefly about that experience, um, we had no no weather bureau. We, we, all we had in the school was a barometer. So how you used to know? A barometer at the school, but other, other than that... Checking the pressure? People, yeah, checking the pressure. When the barometer went down, the nun said, look, children, you have to try to get home because mm. um, there's going to be a storm. Mm. At that time, the sea you know, was, was rough, reaching to the, to the front street. Um, the waves were reaching in the front street and running through the, the side alley, running down in the pond. And a lot of the children who wow. attended school from the French side couldn't get back home. They, they just had to stay at their friends. You're speaking about St. Joseph College, right? St. Joseph right. College. I, St. Joseph I grew College. up right in the alley, just not far from there. Yeah, right. that's correct. Um, in those days, people knew when a storm was approaching by looking at, the, at nature signs. Um, as an example, you'll notice the, the cows in the pasture going in one direction, the fowls trying to hide under the house, the birds flying in one direction, the other direction to where the weather is coming from, and um, the trees. Um, the, the main tree that people looked mm. at in those days was the palm tree trees. Really? The palm tree tree would turn their leaves around to the direction of where the weather is coming from. I've never heard that before. That's right. And you can check that though. Anytime there's a storm approaching, mm. you can look at the palm tree trees, they all turn white. They all turn white because the, the back of the leaves is towards where the wind is coming from. Um, just about, I think, when we expected that um, hurricane. Danny, is Danny? Um, um, not too long ago here. Yeah, right, Danny. Yeah. yeah. Um, I told a few fellows who were in the group we were talking, and they said, that hurricane is not going to hit St. Martin. It's going to pass us by. It's not going to, it's not going to hit. Well, Justin, how do you know that? I said, but this is simple. Look, look at the trees. Look at the position of the hurricane, and look at the trees. Every, every tree is normal. It gives no sign that the weather is coming. When the weather passed by, <laughs> Hmm. They met me the family and they said, man, you're the professor, how you know that? I mean, I, I, I studied those things, I, I'm acquainted with those things, so I can always speak, you know, about the natural things of nature when certain things are going to take place. The thing is that now, it's so hard to find a palm tree tree. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's true, there are very few now, because the last hurricane we had, you know, destroyed most of the, 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 the trees. You know what I remember when I was a little boy? In the 60s, uh, we would see a red flag flying by the police station in, in, in town. Yeah, by the market. Right. By the market. They don't give that sign anymore. We don't need that anymore now. We have technology now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, there are so many things that people don't pay attention to. And I always refer to, uh, you, ha you have to know your past to know your future. Mm. Because history repeats itself. And there's so many proof of that. I told people, I said, right now, and there was an article a few months ago about the possibility of an astronaut um, falling off of the record that can trigger a tsunami and so on in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. um, some, some said, no, this is not possible, it's not true, and so on. But it's about 500 years ago that um, a tidal wave, as they call it in those days, <laughs> They came from the west, started from Puerto Rico side, came to St. Martin, went over the town of Marigot, made the Simpson Bay Lagoon, 
and so on, it can happen again. Uh, pe people don't pay attention to what you know took place yeah. in the past. Uh, when I look at the um, at the the, the Cooper Kai um, project, down where they have the rotunda, right? Yeah? And I said, but how could they allow a project like that in the mouth of the Ragoon, where the sea came over and went all the way up Cold Bay? If this happens again, that whole building, I mean, will be gone. It's going to happen. Again. And it's going to happen again. Because you know that that was a swamp area, and that's exactly the oh. area where the lagoon meets the ocean. When that's the right, at high, at high sea, right. and 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 you can notice that the hill, you know, has a slope in it, yeah. just where the sea came over and went all the way up, and um, well road and, uh, and narrow drive and so on, where the mangroves are. Uh, I mean, uh, they don't pay attention to these things. Uh, they just give a permit, and pff, you want to build there, you build. But um, if you want to build your home somewhere. That is going to be a strict, strict order that you can build there. There's a zooming area, etc. Well, you see, that's a multi-million-dollar project, so it's different. Another thing I look at, I, um, I, I walked to Isopan mm. in, on a donkey in a donkey track with my father, fishing on the reef where Isobe Hotel is being built. Is built. Was it there at the time when you used to go over there, the hotel? Uh, of course. The, 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 the build the hotel on top of the reef where my father and all the people from Dutch Quarter, French Quarter, went and fished with a bamboo rod. Mm. Now, in a tremor, and that reef breaks, what do you think is going to happen to that, that mansion um, that is built there? It's going to collapse. The, the, nobody checking on the reef. I mean, uh, uh, thank God nothing happened up to now. I understand that um, years, many years ago, back in the 50s, they used to take the, the boats there during the to storm. To shelter. Yeah. To shelter. There's no room now. There's so many boats in there. That, uh, <laughs> there's no room for the Blue Peter at that time used mm. to go there. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Used to go to the Japan for shelter. And it, it's amazing, this island, how we have changed and the progress. And I, I mean, progress is good, you know? That's right. But sometimes we have to be careful. That's right. You know, in, 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 in school, we were taught very little about the, the history of the island. We, we learned about Europe, about the United States, etc., South America, but not much about St. Martin. There was one argument that um, St. Martin never had a volcano. That's not true. They had? But, um, there's a crater mm. of a volcano to the eastern side of Naked Bay Hill that can hold in an upstairs house. And um, my stepbrother, he's, he's, one alive, he's still alive because he told me about it first. And he said that himself and his friend went there many times as a boy and they shouted down in the, in the crater and he had the, their voice echoing and so on. My mother also told me that, um, and that, that that hill used to smoke when she was a little girl. But people tell you, oh, no, uh, uh, Nickel Bar Hill doesn't have a volcano. It never did have. And, and, and I confirm that um, creator with um, one of the guys at work at GB who told me, he said, it's true, there is a creator to the um, eastern side of Nickel Bar facing St. Bats. People don't know, they, they, they don't know, no research has been done, anything as such, to be able to confirm and look, this, this is what. It took place in the past. I used to hear um, when I was a little boy about something where the the, the, the Great Salt Pond had that plant um, that's now. Oh, what do they call it? A salt factory? Yeah. That was never a salt factory because this, the, the, um, the salt pond mm. had different grades of salt and it was picked and went directly to the, the heaps in Phillipsburg where it was stored. And my grandfather. Mm. And this is very interesting to note. My grandfather was born in 1863. Henry and Dell, they call him Boston from um, um, Suck and Russ. Okay? And he told me, he died in 1960, so he was 96 years old. Um, he said um, that was an engine, a pump, to pump the water at heavy rainfall out of the salt pond through the Phoebe pond to the sea so the salt doesn't get melted right. with heavy rainfall. Um, 
in, in 1855, I think it was, when the Rolandos Canal was, was dug by, by uh, Rolandos that came from Holland and did it. Um, that was to carry the water straight to the sea from the upper end so it doesn't go into the salt pond to, to melt the salt. So it was a pump house, and, and the official name of it was a Foga Pump House because Foga was the name of my estate. It's amazing because as a little boy growing up, you know, I used to walk up on, on, on the, the bank, bank, on the bank uh, yeah. going up to Saka Garden, ne never realizing it was man made. Yeah, yeah. the bank was, <laughs> the train was man made. Was man -made train. Yeah. And you know what? It's so strange. And I, 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 I always remark this um, about, um, about that situation. We have cross guts, for instance, Vicky's gut, um, Bloomingdale gut, Experiment gut, this, which is a cross gut um, joining with the main gut going to the sea. Uh, when it, at heavy rain, it would override that, that main gut mm. and would edge the bank from the outside and just eat it away and it's a bank bus. The water would go then in the salt pond. Dutch engineer came, instead of strengthening the, the canal where that took place, they put um, stones so the water can go over easily to the salt pond and then propose pumps to pump the water from the salt pond out to the sea. Now, if you would, um, what I should say, um, strengthen those weaknesses, you, have, you don't need any pumps. Another thing that, that the government allow to take place, the filling of the Fubi pond. The filling of the Fubi pond. They're building there the, now. The, pardon me? They're building houses there. Well, that's what I'm saying. They fill it and build houses on it. And where the, that pond held and cut, cut the water from Upper Princess Quarter, Sucker Garden, Madam Estate, over the pond, went into that pond, it passed by the cottage, you know, the cottage yeah. by Eddie Auto, and went into um, that pond, got ahead, and went to the sea. Now, at a heavy rainfall, where would that water run? It's going to run into the salt pond because there's no catch for it. Oh. And, and I said, if, at a heavy rainfall, you can bring water pumps, you cannot stop Phillipsburg from flooding. So, where, 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 what are we going to do? Um, what are we going to do when we get a heavy rainfall? I mean, I'm, I'm worried. Pray, pray that we don't. Because I can remember well uh -huh. when the, the Mainers Dam, which, were, which we call the Long Dam, mm -hmm. that connected from Sucker Garden to, um, to over the pond by the cottage, when it was broken in 1975, um, I spoke to the then executive council. I was a member of the council at that time. Oh, um, we're not going to repair it because uh, that's, that rain, you don't get that amount of rain again. And that's where the filling started, filling it where the zoo is and behind Richardson's house and, and so on. Um, that, that, that cut the water that came from mass bomb, so to speak, through, through the arch by that bridge and, and, and the water went there. So, we, so what we have done in the last 35 years is uh, filling most of the areas that water we, used to go from the Exactly. So, exactly. A, so there's another disaster another waiting, waiting to happen. To happen. You take, uh, for example, the salt pond, the dump. Um, I, uh, my grandfather also told me, he said, you know, they should never fill that salt pond, you know, because the, um, the veins of the volcanoes in the Caribbean um, cool off there. My grandfather told me that. Mm. Now, to prove that, um, that there is um, some connection with the volcanoes in the Caribbean, um, in the 60s, there was a professor here by the name of um, Yeta, himself and um, 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 Lexi Annell, who was then chief of public works, went into the salt pond with a dinghy to do a little research. What they came up with, sludge from the, the, the hill, you know, that water uh, uh, took there, white base size sand, so white like a sheet of paper, and um, below there, sulfur. And if you can check well, check when it started filling, uh, like, like the, 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 the present kind of village and, and, and a little league, you know, Mount Swat started erupting. You check back. And right now, in, in the, the old islands in the Caribbean are experiencing tremors 
because the more they fill. And uh, in my opinion, this is under my opinion, that dump is waiting at the right time to blow because it's, it's catching fire on its own. Mm. And um, I, I went to the, um, I went in the, the salt pond now that uh, part of it is, is, is dry because of the drought. And oh, I took... Well, I know, but I'm going to bring that up a little bit. You're talking about the, the, um, the dump, and I want to go back to that because it's, it's massive. If you look on your screen, you can see right now I have a video rolling of the, of the dump. And I tell you, I'm surprised. Yeah. yeah. I'm, it's massive. Massive, massive. Um, you, you, it's a other mountain in a created mountain, a built, uh -huh. uh, erected mountain um, outside of Phillipsburg. It's getting taller and taller. It's <laughs> growing by the week. Yes, by the day. <laughs> I, don't, I, I didn't want to say that, but it's, I, I'm, I'm very, very concerned here. No, I, well, I am concerned because, I mean, when, it's, when it blows, mm. there's going to be a lot of damage, believe me. And as far as I heard from someone, that same thing happened in Holland sometime in the past. Because they have not uh, created any... In the breeding, in the breeding. Right. So it's going to just explode once this is. No breeding. And, but aren't you surprised? Because this has been going on for a long time. The first dump was on the 80 Elige Road. But there's no interest. There's no interest government-wise. Um, I can remember well uh -huh. a politician a leader of, of a political party, a leader of government, during the co political campaign, pledged he was going to remove that dump. That's what he said really? to people. He's going to mo mo elect him, he's going to get rid of that dump. I mean, that's quite some time ago. Mm. Instead of the dump being diminished, it has been increasing. Oh, it's going rapidly. And uh, we have to do something about it because it's just a matter of time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And that has taken up a lot of area for water to go into the salt pond. Yes. And uh, according to them, the ring road is what's going to save Phillipsburg from the, from the, the southern The end. ring road is going to save Phillipsburg? Yes, that's what, that's what um, uh, uh, an official from the department that has to do with that mm. said. They, they, they're prepared for heavy rainfall because the ring road will stop the water from going to town. Let me, let me tell you, I, I, um, I have experience. In 1965, when we, when um, the airport was being built, and Van der Kwas was um, the one doing the airport, and they had the Van der Kwas camp. Okay? We had a rainfall of cloud bus in St. Peter's area, and the cars were moved from a was fancy yard and were found in the middle of the the the, 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 um, the gutter head pond. What year that was again? I think that was in 65. Oh, okay. I was small. <laughs> I don't remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so we can, we can get a, a cloud bus, we can get rain. Well, we had one again a, a few years. Yes. Uh, and two people yes. died. Yes. Yeah. 75. But you, you were saying also that you, you took some pictures that I want to show you because I think it's yes. quite interesting that what you brought along. I am. I am. Well, is this the moon? Is this a face <laughs> of the moon? <laughs> that's, just, that's the salt pond, the dry salt pond. When we were, when we were boys, mm. uh, and the pond dry b because of drought, yeah. you only had a layer of salt, white. We would call it snow. <laughs> I mean, but this took the face of, of Mars or something like that. And, and I'm telling you, it, it was a strange, strange sight to me. Uh -huh. um, you had different colors of this, this small crater, yeah. different colors of, of, um, of water in it. And I'm, I'm saying the one that is blue or gray, mm -hmm. it, it tells you that that is something extraordinary. They're right next to each other. You can see the different colors. Yeah, yeah different colors. Wow. Uh, it looks like you're on, on, the, on, you're on a Mars planet. or something like that. You're on a planet, yeah. yeah. And this, then there's the other one that is blue. This one is blue. You'll see because we have a delay system, so you'll see it in a while. And um, that is also, I think you took that one from the middle one, but it's amazing. The colors and what, how would yeah, they? that one. And that's this one, one you know, is yeah. this. Uh, and the, and that's, the, that's a dry pond mm. with those little craters there. You know, I mean, I, I think there should be some research, some, some type of investigation to, to, to see what is it actually. And look at the whole, you have this white shot that you, took, you brought also with you where you can see the entire, this is where salt used to grow in the yes, pond. Yes, yes. And now that's right. it's. 
you can see all the mud there. All the so mud there. And, and, and you know better than I that when we were small and you you all and I that the salt go there. Yeah. There's nothing there now but nothing. mud. Mud, only mud. Normally, when we were small and it dry up, you will see the salt because right. we we rode bikes on the salt, and we played bat and ball on the salt. Um, there were a few stones with a little amount of um, of grains of salt mm. on the set. Right. That's why I also said that can promote the salt growing again in that area. Wow, that's going to be expensive. That's going to no. be difficult. No, why? Because you close off um, the the connection to the big part of the salt pond, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and you allow the seawater to come in, uh, not too much, just enough. That uh -huh. would make salt because that's where it started from. The now, sea was there. Now help me here because I, I know as a little boy, I used to play in the salt pond sometimes, go there, look, trying to get bird eggs and that's all right. that. And the salt, there was different colors of the salt. Yes, when the salt was ripe, mm -hmm. you, you, you get pink, and you get um, white, and you get gray. I didn't and know. It, 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 it was it, beautiful. It, it, you, you could have seen it from. Um, from Guanabe Hill, mm -hmm, right. when you look at the pond, you saw different colors. And now that's... And, and that, that again um, was because of the different grades of salt. Yeah, it's, it's just some... It, I, don't, I don't think young people today realize how Not beautiful Sir Martin is. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. Yeah. You know, um, I can remember in 1965, um, when Her Majesty um, was about to visit us. Was, at the was that Juliana? Yes. Oh. Um, Yapa Bourgeon was a um, governor at the time, and he said, um, you know, we should try to make something out of salt to present to her. I said, um, I think that what we can do, we can make a boat. So we made a boat from wire, put mm. it in a salt pan, and it grows salt, it grows salt <laughs> a, a boat uh, uh, on the, 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 um, yeah. the wire thing, and, and made a boat of salt. And we never used to import salt. Import, <laughs> of course, that means and export. And the salt, salt pot was better than all the we salt you export, ever had. Export, export salt. Uh -huh. Export salt. Oh man, it's you know, it's it's you, you know, sometimes it's sad to when you think about the past, and you see what we have done to this island, because we could have we could have grown as a tourist island, or we could have preserved something, and we haven't preserved anything. anything. And I, I think that was bothering me the most. Anything, anything. Yeah, I, I, I made mention of the possibility of, um, of um, salt being um, cultivated, so to speak, yeah. there again. The place, I say, is the best island in the world. We both were born in Zimbabwe, right? Yeah, I was born in Curacao. <laughs> you see now? I'm going to change it, man. <laughs> what you say that for, man? <laughs> <laughs> the other night I was, I was doing a program here, and someone called in and spoke to the operator and said, um, that Frank Mingo was not from St. Martin. I was saying he's a great St. Martin man, this and that. I said, no, you're from Aruba. But he was born in Curacao too, you know? Yeah. A lot of people from St. Martin were born in Curacao. Definitely, because but we still call you St. Martin. Our, par our parents went there to work. My uh -huh. father went there to work with the Islam. But you know, one of the things I always remember, you know, and and, and uh, even though Mr. Wati, Claude Wati, mm -hmm. you know, I know him, uh, I think he was one of the best politicians I had in the Caribbean. Yeah. Um, I was a member of the Island Council, and we had a meeting in Seba. At that time, it was one island territory. Yeah? And I proposed in the meeting that we should keep a referendum on St. Martin so that people can decide actually whether they want to go independent or whatever they wanted. You know? It came from me, that proposal. You know what he said? He said he support what, um, what um, Councilman Andel um, proposed, but only St. Martin bomb people should vote in that referendum. You out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I always remember that. This guy was good. But, but, but I, I think I think, I think Junior Lake put it a little different. You know, Junior Lake is a champion for independence for Simon. Also, he's the president of Independence for Simon Foundation. And he put it this way, and I agree with him. If your parents are from St. Martin, doesn't matter where you were born, then you are allowed to vote. Yeah. I think that that's that's pretty <laughs> fair. <laughs> no, but that was a, a political shot. Yeah. Me, you know? I know because you were a politician of at the time. You were a big politician <laughs> those days. <laughs> but um, but then later on, by by 1981, on am I sure he called for independence? Yeah, he said that was, was his opinion. Eh? Yeah, yeah. 
But you know, it's, it's amazing because the, the, the people of Samaritan have always been very independent, independent people. Yeah. They always wanted to do a lot of things for themselves. Let, let, me, let me take a call if you hear me, Mr. Arnold. Uh, Oral Gibbs live on call. Hello? You on live call? Good night. Good night. What Mr. Andes is saying there stands to be correct concerning the volcano that is cooling its roots in the solid part. But I could remember many a color thought many of us at school, which I also was one. And he emphasized and he told us if ever they would want us to sign a paper, a document concerning flying up the solid part, do not sign it because it is fooling the root of, of a volcano. No, the next thing he said that is correct. In 1975, when the dam was broken uh, along the Lydian Sucker Garden, uh, it is correct because the sand bank, the sand bank there, as it is known. You're talking about the ocean now in Great Bay. Yes, but what I'm talking about, we're talking about, it's like a garden, mm. the bank that people walk upon. Okay, yeah, that, Rolanda, that, that's the Rolanda's, Rolanda's canal, canal he mentioned. Yeah. My great uncle, Captain Hodge, damaged his hand trying to help to fix that dam. The gentleman is correct. He knows what he's saying. Then again, concerning the salt pond, play. If you, if you was to play your tapes and many other persons would, I always have said they are going about things wrong in the salt pond. It can make salt again. Mm -hmm. I even said, although the salt would not perhaps uh, be, be able to be consumed, the, the, there are many things that salt is used for, like, like, like helping to, to, uh, to, to melt ice, to store ice in the big countries and so forth. Let them play the tapes. What he's saying is correct. I am one who strongly believes that the salt part can make salt again. I added moreover, then our youngsters would have a privilege to see how salt was grown. grown. And it would be an added attraction again for tourists because we have lost a lot of our, of, of our added uh, attraction. But many people don't listen to persons like Mr. Jocelyn and myself and a few other persons moreover because we happen to be weak. Yes, grandmother, Respectfully, Kate Matthew used to see naked boy hill smoking. You remember that, Mr. Anders? That's correct. That's correct. That's why I made mention of that. Because people, people didn't believe that there was a volcano at one time. Yeah, yes. For example, for example, Come out here where I am living, and I'm going to show you something. Bring your camera, and I'm going to show you something. I have been hearing 
certain sources have said, Matthew, well, I am not speaking about it in an official way, but remarks have been made sometimes about blowing up a huge rock that is in Century Hill in order to accommodate and facilitate some sort of a project plan that persons have uh, for the Emilio Wilson estate with some kind of a tragedy or whatever. That would be the day. Because they were talking about dynamiting that huge rock. These people don't care about us. The next thing I have said, stop building so high in the hills. And if you, for example, was to look at that project, which they call... Okay, we don't have much time, so we're going to have to... Which they call the Indigo Project or whatever. How it is alleged of houses over the sea. These people have not seen hurricanes like Donna. They have not. They better stop their nonsense and listen to, to the elderly people. Well, thanks for calling. Thank you. Thank you very much. I say that often. No, what you're saying is correct. It's the same trend of what I've been speaking about. You know, there's a lot of things that are possible, and there's a lot of things that government should not allow to happen because it is planting the seed for, for, for disaster. Well, you know, a lot of people say, well, no, they got insurance, so they got money. I, I, I believe that that yeah. is what they, they said. But it's, um, it, it's just it's a, a pity. Yeah. And another thing I want to say briefly, too, you know, um, we are a tourist um, um, oriented um, island, and we depend on tourism. And you get taxi drivers that don't know anything at all about this just common history of the island. You, 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 you get, I think most of them don't they know. They don't know. I had offered my services, I said, listen, um, in your meeting hall mm. or your association hall, I will come one night and give you a lecture about these things so you know what to tell tourists when they ask a certain question. Because some of them don't know how the Sense Mill Lagoon came about. They don't know how the salt pond came about. They mm -hmm. don't know how Phillipsburg got its name. Nothing. So what are you actually telling the tourists? And tourists complain. They drive from the harbor mm -hmm. to Orion Bay without saying a word to the tourists, not telling them any, anything historical at all. But you know, we have to do like some countries. I'm, I'm not proposing that we do like uh, Britain where you have to go to an extensive course. Yes. No, I'm not saying that. But the, a regular two or three month course so you really know the island well before yes. you can get a taxi yes. license and yes. a risk certification every five, six years. No, I mean, I mean it's, it, you should be able to impact mm. um, positive historical um, um, uh, um, lectures or a stories to, to the tourists. Yeah, but this is a tourist island, so exactly. we, our taxi drivers are very important people. Some of the taxi drivers think the South Pond came about by heavy rain from the hills. <laughs> you know. And somebody took a taxi driver to tourists that people used to stand from front street and pee down the back street. No, this is crazy things. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? No, that, the past, mine was a nice island. We didn't have the pond um, fill up, so you only had back street and front street. But I think it was beautiful. But I'll tell you something. I heard, and I think I read this too mm. on, um, on a piece from the internet, that Fittersburg was filled, and the pond was mm. filled, to make an airport. <laughs> and I, I said to myself, <laughs> um, Dormois, the pilot at the uh, time, uh -huh. did um, try a little landing, a, a touch and go there, and, and, and when um, the person who was in charge of aviation at the airport um, heard of it, he wanted to, take, to suggest to take his license, he said I did not land. I just came, touch, and go, that in case there's an emergency, to see if a plane would be able to pick up a patient there. Mm. It was with the Donier. 
And that, that, that's when the, the pond was filled up and there was no buildings there. There wasn't buildings there, yeah. they just, just filled yeah, right. the, the, where we would call it the Calagita Street right. and the pond filled. So I can remember it was filled and left there for many years before they started building anything. Yeah. But uh, it, it's, it's just amazing because another thing is the sandbar in, in Great it's Bay. Really well, okay. yeah. I, I remember the little boy swimming in Great Bay and going out there. It's very shallow. It's a nice an area. An oar. An oar. Right, yeah. And I'm worried about the sandbar too. I too have my concerns because that was a break mm -hmm. water actually. It used to break the waves coming in yeah. and then the waves would cool up and still it used to reach on front street. It protects fillers for it. And I have, I have now that, that that is not there. It's still there. It's still there. Yeah, but not, not as it was because yeah. they dredge a lot there. And, and um, I expect one of these days this, mm. this sea is going to reach all the way on back street. Because when you, when you have um, a storm, you can see how the water comes and it starts to hit and then it's running yeah. from east to west. I've, I've seen the sea um, over, over that um, mm. building on the small pier. The sea was busting over that. I've seen that with my eyes. Well, I, I'm just praying that we don't have any <laughs> Hurricanes, uh, too much rain. I hope because I think the way St. Martin has developed now, we can't take it. In. Yeah, that's true. You know, one of the things that really have me concerned. Mm. There are a few of us still um, physically fit mm. that used to be in a hurricane um, committees. Okay, um, what they have done. Not that I want to be anymore, but I'm just telling you. There's a lot of people here yeah. who know about hurricane and could be in the committees and could advise. You're going to bring people from elsewhere who have never experienced a hurricane to put them in committee to deal with a hurricane disaster. I mean, come on now. They should have people from every district. Naturally, that's what it used to be. Mm -hmm. They, they just, just don't worry about them anymore. And um, I have been out in the middle of, 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 of storms. Out in the middle of the storm. And we had persons like Carlson Velasquez, I would like to call right. his name, because he, he, he was very, very active and he, he knows a lot. Okay? We had Cyril Hazel, another guy who right. knows a lot. Uh, Anders Williams, who was full up in his quarter and so on. Um, these people know what's a storm, they know what to expect. But you're going to bring someone from a country that has never experienced a hurricane and put him in, in to tell you what to do in a hurricane. It has never experienced hurricane. <laughs> That's a matter. It's a matter. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's it's just amazing that well, well, we are lucky, Alan. Blessed. Are we gonna run out of luck soon? Yeah. Yes, we ran out of luck with Lewis <laughs> <laughs> because I also made mention of this: mm. the magnitude of Hurricane Lewis that passed between Saint Bad's. St. Chris Nevis and smash up the Dutch soil of, um, of St. Martin. Mm. The magnitude of Hurricane that passed between St. Bats yeah. and St. Chris Nevis didn't damage them station either and, and smash up the Dutch soil of St. Martin. I mean, it tells you something. And it's Our luck had run out. It's true because when you look at it, the French side had very little the, damage. Yes. And I tell you, the other hurricane that came from the west that died on St. Martin. Didn't hit Anguilla, no, no, no St. Bats, no Flat Island. You mean Lenny? <laughs> yeah, they died here two, three days and died right here. Yeah. And that was a late, that was a late storm, November, yeah. late yeah. November. Yeah. I think those are the worst storms because if you get damaged in late November, then your season. And there was no rain, only rain alone. Wait, that was George. That, that was George, okay, yeah. George. Yeah, because Lenny was a lot of rain. Yep. I know it's, it's just amazing how sometimes um, you get the hurricanes and you either get one that's a lot of rain or a lot of rain. If you get them with boat, you're in trouble. Yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah. You're in trouble. Have you seen that um, yes. years ago? Yep. Yeah. And you know what is so strange? In the middle of a storm, a house catch a fire. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <Wow. laughs> but, but, In the middle of a storm. Yeah. Was Donna a hurricane that had a lot of rain and wind? Um, wind. Only way. Yeah, yeah, we had rain too, but not as, not as it much. It seems like those very powerful hurricanes normally have more wind than rain. Yeah, more wind than rain. And the rain, what we call rain, is actually seawater 
that is taken up from the sea. It brings the sea water with it. In the air, and mm -hmm. then it drops. So that's the reason why people used to disconnect the systems. This cisterns. is false, yeah. yeah. Now, we, when we had Lois, a few days after, we had Marilyn, and that was good. That, that was good, because yeah. it washed away all the, the salt from the sea. So see, God's still looking over us. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> live, you're live call. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. one minute, please. Mr. Yeah. Yes, of course. Mr. Amel, I hear you speak about a hurricane. Do you know the name of the 1950 hurricane? Yes, of course I know. And the name of that hurricane was, was Dog. What? Dog was the name of the hurricane 1950. Flora, Flora 1950 hurricane, Flora. No, no, Dog. D-O-G, Dog 1950 hurricane. They were, they, at that time, they were... wrong. It's Flora. Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't know how to speak, but I can make you a bet, and then I could, um, I could uh, meet you any time and collect. <laughs> what do you think? Flora was, away, was long after 1950. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, let's get a call. Uh, uh, Oral gives live and call. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hello. Yes. I want to congratulate the gentleman for all the information that he's giving us. But one thing I'd like to say about the salt pond, it was the biggest money maker we could have ever had for St. Martin because in the old days when people had rheumatism or arthritis, That's they right. soaked in the pond. That's and right. We could have had cabanas That's and the right. suits and the tourists would have come in droves like they go for the mud baths and other places and the sulfur baths. But we, being as smart as we are, turned it into a garbage dump and it's a sin against St. Martin and it's a sin against God. Thank you. Thank you for calling, man. So true. Yeah, that is correct. And uh, I can confirm that um, tourists came to the island at, at, at midday and soaked in the salt pond and got, and got cured. Yeah. Yeah. All gives live and call. Hello. Hello. Good yeah. night. Good night. Good night. Yes. Uh, they don't have any salt ponds in Trinidad, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. So what happened is this. I admire all the information that Justin has given. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, one of the main reasons why that uh, people never speak so much about the salt pond and the type of origin is because of tourism. Just one minute, I hear my TV. Yeah. Right, look, okay, we, 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 we wait on you. Okay, we, we wait on you while you, you turn it down. And yeah, just let, let me yeah. see it all right. In the meantime, I'm showing a picture of the salt pond that it's on that broad that's completely dried up. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah go it's true. It's true. Yes, I took off the TV now. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. You're on. Go when ahead. Was, when we figure out after a time that tourism will have money, they try to keep down this idea about the volcano was in the salt pond no. or anything to that effect. Now, you notice know, those big rocks have all along the area by something boy hill, something there. Those rocks came from the bosom of the earth. When you see behind, yes. Are you hearing? Yeah, we hear you. Oh, yes, sir. I can hear some water background there. Just behind Faith, by your safe house, is by the Alexander Bridge. If you just go in that road, like you go to make the shortcut to go to Green Bay, you will see some big rocks. And those big rocks there, those are good, could be tourist attraction. But if you carry tourists along there, you have to explain to them how or why those big rocks came there. Yeah. And every, everybody free to make any statement because we depend so much on tourists, tourism, so we don't want the people to be aware that we have working on the area. You see, like Justin tell you, it's sulfur. I remember in 1962 and 1963 on the road to St. Thomas. We came in here and we smelled that part, that road, that, that part of the thing in the, yeah, the road. So we know exactly where the pond was staging itself. That is why it used to smell so bad. But people should realize to a point now 
We are living in a part of our kingdom. You see those rocks that come out of the, the, the bosom of the earth? The wrong, wrong, wrong. Ask how well you tell you. The, the crushers that they have cannot do nothing to those rocks because it's probably well weak. Especially that hill behind my uh, shoulder. Right. I'll be here behind my seat as I explained to you. And by the Alexander Bridge, the rocks all came from the bosom of the earth. Now, Mr. Justin, I know you're technical like a historian because I've been knowing you on the island here for a very long time. And at the same time, I didn't get a chance to come to congratulate you. And thank you very much for the CD that you gave me with, with the music of the band, Tanya and the boys. But you see, you all are legions in the country. A couple of years ago, we used to be sending the Tani and the boys. We have new things all about. But then St. Martin started going on. And any time the cultural part is not an easy to, you know, to, to lift it up, everybody forgets the country. Because, you know, everybody in a, in a happy, go lucky situation to make uh, money. Now all the piece of land from my cowboy and all the next time I said, the fellow who used to call me all the time, you know, all that land is, I have gone through the works. And they're still holding on on it. But anyway, let me let this one be tiny. All right. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Thanks for calling, Magic. Yeah, those rocks you mentioned there by the Prince Bernard Bridge. Look, um, in 1979, when we had Frederick, there's no one old enough that can remember the gut by, that took away um, Austin Yorks, um, dining room and kitchen of his house there in Sucker Garden. If you look at that hill, you'll see trees, green trees, go right up the hill to the top. That's mm -hmm. a gut. Heavy rain, the gut came down there. And, and it's to show you that in the past, we had more rain than we are getting today, indeed. Because right by the, um, when you go along the arch or the bend, those rocks, they remove right. them now. And also those black rocks that he spoke about, they, they came down from the mountain because of um, heavy rain. They keep sliding and sliding until they pile up there. That, that's where those rocks came from. Oh. But they, they're unusual. They look different. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's old. Mm. Now, we are having very de devastating hurricanes. There's one that is down in record from 1819. The one that separates Simpson Bay from the mainland, mm. 1819, that went down and, and destroyed um, um, Santo Domingo, that, that destroyed, killed a lot of people on Stacia, it cleaned up all the houses on Sabre, and so on, the people were living in the caves. You know, we have had very devastating hurricanes in the past. Well, you know, the, the thing is that today, um, it, will be very, it will be a disaster if we have those kind of hurricanes. I'm telling you. Because we haven't learned from 1995, we've gone back to our old ways already. Yep. So it's, uh, I, I see we are building more and more glass and everything else. You know, yeah, we need I mean, glass is strong, I understand that. And but how hurricane shutters yeah. in the protective against the wind and so on. But um, if you take Donna, for example, Donna was a, a very, very strong hurricane. Um, houses were taken up from the foundation and placed elsewhere in pieces, in splinters. I have the entire foil on, on Hurricane Donna, mm -hmm. um, house to house damage and repair. It's amazing, because the little house I was born in, that stood up, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when the houses were built, after 1950 Hurricane, those small houses were, were built oh, okay. from wood. Okay. Wood houses. And so they built them very, and very strong. Still have them They're still around. today. Yep. Okay. I didn't, so most of those Little houses region, were after 1950? yes. All right. Very, I, I didn't know that. That's right. I didn't know that. Oh, that takes a call here. Oral Gibbs live and call. Hello. You're on live call. Hello. Yes. What you're saying there about Donna is precisely so. I used to work at Little Bay Hotel at that time. Mm -hmm. And Donna took up <laughs> rocks from off the earth. Yes, sir. When we was coming from Little Bay Hotel to go home and to go back, and there was a gentleman they used to call Nightcap. Mm -hmm. Nightcap. Fonso. That's right. That's right. He used to drink a lot. Donna lifted up Fonso bodily, carrying him up, carrying him up. 
So I sure. went and brought him back down. Sure. And he said, a miracle fan, so this is very. So when these people talk about hurricanes, or they talk about St. Martin, they don't know anything about St. Martin. What you're saying, Mr. Arnold, is correct. And, and it, Bobby Velasquez, Matthew well, with the uh, with what we call the sand bank there. No, Bobby Velasquez did a wonderful job there with helping getting to ship or something off the sand bank. You remember that, time? Right? Yes, yes. You see. All right, all right. Captain Hodge and all the rest of them, they were people who knew the business. Full steam in. Yeah, those guys were legendary. Yeah. They were the great. The family used to build ships, the ship rights. Mm -hmm. Where are we out of time, um, Doc? Sorry, I got to run. All right, thanks for calling. Okay. Uh, Oral Gibbs Live. And we're not, we're not going to take any more calls. We just want to. So it's. What, what about the music telling the boys? Oh, right? no. Well, we have, a group in, we have a grouping right now because, you know, we lost um, um, Maxim, who right. was a vocalist and guitarist, and now we, we are, we're grouping again. So you know, the, band is, the, the band is can play, we still play, mm -hmm. but um, not as before because we are practicing the, the new guys who are with us, uh -huh. the, the, our type of music. Because from the, from the first time when I had you all on speaking about everything back in 1985, yeah. four guys have died so far yeah. since that time. Yeah. It's Abraham, Abraham, Tani, Tani Maxim, and Calibre. Yeah. Yeah. So from the original band members, there were only three left? Yeah, so because it was um, um, Edward, mm. um, Roosevelt, myself, and, um, and, and George Fidelinos. Yeah, four. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's amazing. Um, I always yeah. remember the days we, we went. We, we, we would have 56 years playing now, eh? Wow, it's a long time. Yeah, 56 years. You're all the, the oldest band? The, longest the oldest band, band, yeah, on the island. Because there's some other bands I Yeah, understand. but not as old as us. <laughs> wow. We started in November 1959. And you people really. I remember the first time I took you all to St. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Everybody was so excited, so happy with you guys. That's correct. We wanted you to come back again. We, we, it was we, great. We went back about three times. Yeah. After. Well, it was really nice. But uh, we just about other times. So I only have about 30 seconds. Anything else you want to add in closing? Well, no, it has been a pleasure um, you know, being on your program. And I hope that the information that people have received, uh, uh, that they didn't know, that now they know. All right. <laughs> I just, but I want to thank you for coming in because, as I say, a lot of young people always refer to you and uh, look forward to seeing you in this program. And um, it's nice having you here all the time. And if they missed it, they were able to see it online, either tonight or tomorrow. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> all right, so thanks a lot again. You're welcome. All right. Always. Thank you. And that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Until then, good night. Bye.